I grew up in a very small city. It's a very old city in northern Mindanao called Butuan City. Growing up in Butuan, you are, I remember very distinctly, close to family, close to our friends, close to our relatives. It can be a bit suffocating, but in a very positive way. It was a very supporting environment, a nurturing one, and there is much trust. My family's roots has been there for over a hundred years. And of course, I grew up as a Christian, a lowlander Christian in the city. But early on, I have been made aware by my mother that I have Manobo blood. I am a Manobo. Yeah, my mother was an educator. She was a high school principal at the time when I was in high school. And my grandmother was a principal as well in elementary. So I grew up with principals all around me, watching me and watching my performance. My mother was a church leader as well. And naturally, when, since I was six years old, I was always with church activities. There are many adjectives that I could use to describe my brother, Jijil. He is disciplined. Every time we arrived home from school, the first thing he did was to open his notes and study. In my first years in grade school, I think for two years, aside from the honors, I would get this best, I don't know, it's most helpful medal. And I remember one of those medals I received in high school was best in religion. And it's incredible because I didn't expect they would give me that kind of medal. I don't know if my mother kept it because she, she keeps uh, setting aside all those medals and ribbons I got since I was uh, a little boy. He's a wonderful father, and I'm just not saying that, you know, in a very shallow way. Being a father transformed him a bit. Uh, nagbago siya. My husband is the kind of father each one needed because, you know, our, our children are very individual. Yung, ano, hindi siya parang he had rules for everyone. He treated each one individually what is needed. So. He was the best, most compassionate and tender to our eldest son. And then to Alexandra, who had her own special experience as a child. You know, he, she had a unique uh, life story. So he was that to her, uh, a mentor, uh, a teacher, and he made her very strong. A large part because my husband is so supportive. You know, I managed to be, to, you know, fulfill the role of a parent even when I'm so far away, because he made me, he made sure my, my, my children know what my role was in their lives. And I love him for it. My husband is incredibly supportive, not in the way most husbands would be if we were always together, like someone would say you somewhere, someone would just, who would compliment you on things that you do, but more in the things that are kind of life-changing and his conviction was so strong about keeping us together, keeping our marriage together, that you know, um, uh, we survived and we're best friends and we're still together and we're each other's rock. And I totally love him for it, for being that kind of person. It would, probably would not have worked with any other man. We, we grew up together, uh, especially during high school days, where we lived in the same compound. But in high school, Gigi is a very determined pe person. What he wants, he really have to work, uh, work for it and go, uh, go for it. Like Boy Scout Chansia and everything, lahat ng mga organization, lahat ng mga activities, extracurricular activities at school, he always leads. High school, uh, aside from mingling, aside from talking with people, mahilig siya magbasa. He really reads a lot. No? That's one, one thing that I can really say about Gigi. So that's everybody, meron siya, he can converse with them. For most of the time, I was reading and early on, I was writing. Reading was where I withdrew to. Although I was normal, I, I played like every other kid, but I have always grew up knowing of my, aware of my ability to express myself both verbally and in writing. And writing was a passion. I, I wanted to make a career out of it, as a matter of fact, but 
of course, I wanted to be a lawyer. But uh, yeah, I simply love to write. I first met President Gigiel in my methods class as a reflective, passionate, and angst-filled student leader. When I moved to Diliman, the first thing I did was apply for the Philippine Collegiate when I was sophomore. And in the summer of that year, I became OIC features editor, and I have been I was features editor for for almost five years, and that's half of the collegian. So every press work, every week, I would rather spend it in press work, writing with those uh, under uh, Underwood typewriters, editing my colleagues, making their pieces better. I hope uh, lay, laying it out and then seeing it uh, through blueprint. That's the old style. So uh, I, I, I love to write feature stories. And of course, I contributed some poems as well uh, in the Philippe Collegian. So it was a medium for expression, which I found very satisfactory. He finished his undergrad at UP. He uh, finished a law degree at the UP College of Law. And uh, nagkaroon din siya ng master's sa uh, National University of Singapore plus a special uh, uh, masteral uh, coursework at the Kennedy School of Government. No? Now, what is unusual, I think, about his leadership and as a person ay yung experience niya underground. No? Kasi ang... Tingin ko kay President Gigil, ang medyo unique uh, feature ng kanyang pagkatao at leadership is he is a veteran of various crises. He served as a labor attaché in uh, what we might consider in some of the most critical areas where our overseas Filipino workers encountered all kinds of problems. I was appointed as a labor attaché and that means that basically protecting migrant, Filipino migrant workers, which was a very defining, looking back, a very defining moment in my career because up to now I consider myself still a advocate for migrant workers protection He's very hardworking at saka very strong sa networking. Matapang but also very, ano ba, compassionate din siya. When uh, isang kababayan natin, si Angelo de la Cruz, eh, na-kidnap sa Iraq. He was working for the U.S. Army at that time as a driver. I understand that Baghdad was at that time, you know, there are a lot of bombings. There was a, um, it, it was really a war. Gigi was sent over to that in that kind of environment and I, I was very fearful but I was also very trusting of him. They transacted, uh, they managed, they searched for him and managed to find him and get him out. So I think you, that kind of experience as a young uh, public servant molded Gigil that uh, in, in a way that changed the way he looked at everything, at situations, at problems. So, marami bang levels of analysis. And I was watching him at that time, and I was, you know, I was in awe of his bravery, of his competence, of the way he dealt with so many people. Yeah, meron akong napaka poignant na ano sa kanya nung desert storm eh. At that time, ang anak ko kasi, ayaw umuwi. So, he wanted to stay with me. 11 years old, tapos sabi ni Gigil sa akin, Parang nakaka, ano nga eh, nakakatouch. Kasi he, he was trying to tell me na parang kumbaga kupin ko si Edlyn, the wife, at pa, pa stayin ko sa aking place. I don't know if he remembers that, but uh, certainly na ano ako doon. Dahil nag, nag, ano na kami, nagsisil kami ng mga windows because of the threat of ano, yung mga poison, poison gas, ganun. And then he said, Sige, don't worry, don't worry, lose, sabi niya. At yung pinaka-last na plane load ng U.S. Embassy going out of Kuwait, kasama si Paolo, ang aking youngest. Then. I will make sure, sabi niya. Nakakayak ng slide, actually. <laughs> it was very uh, touching. Well, Jesus Jimenez to me is the son 
of my favorite teacher in Butuan City. Of course, he became Jijil in many more dimensions later. But that's how he started to me. Bata pa siya, ano eh, parang destined for leadership na siya eh. Kung hindi man dito sa UP, somewhere else, no? But hindi pwedeng hindi siya maging leader because people see him as somebody who's sincere and passionate and he really exerts his best to deliver the best results he could. His passion for giving equal opportunity and in the Philippines, when you talk of equal opportunity, you'd always think of the marginalized. Eh. Sila ang nasa labas eh. You wanted a wider inclusivity para yung mga marginalized makasama naman sa, sa blessings of opportunity that other people are enjoying. No? His administration is now trying to flesh out how uh, teaching research can in fact enhance the uh, long-time traditional commitment of the University for Public Service, meaning how the expertise and uh, new knowledge created by the university can impact on our most urgent social and economic problems. No? It wasn't surprising to me that during a conversation in my office shortly after his election as UP president, he shared his dream of contextualizing serve the people, a mantra that has resonated with his cause and his cause since the 1970s within the 21st century realities of global higher education and persistent issues like poverty and inequity, which have plagued our nation for much of the 20th century. Uh, President uh, Jimenez is also committed to strengthening and expanding UP's collaborative partnership with state universities and colleges. So, napakahalaga yun, no? Dahil if we succeed in doing that, it means that we will be able to create uh, the foundations for a truly inclusive and more democratic system of higher education. I realize that every society has to develop a certain working level of trust. And every society must build strong institutions that can help it run. And for institutions to survive, it must develop trust. And there must be trust in it by the, Philippine, by, by the people. And there must be enough trust among people in order to survive a society. So this has become very, very important. And without developing a working trust, we can never have a move in the same direction. Of course, uh, the university is meant to, to accommodate all, all differences, but we more or less trust that our institution is strong enough to accommodate any difference and that we are bigger than any things that divide us. And I mean it. We need to be able to unite because this university was not created for us. This was created for the Filipino people and we have a mission and that mission is not for ourselves. There are many programs in other schools that are even better than us and there's so many things we can learn from them as there are so many things that they can learn from us. We should really collaborate and approach everyone in the spirit of equality and respect.